This is the Rough Rider Bow Trapper. It's one of their uh, newest knives uh, and it's gotten a bunch of press. Um, I believe due to the fact that they have uh, really dialed in their process and I think they might be working with a new factory that's producing these and I think they are going to be producing their upcoming uh, special reserve line. Uh, so I think this is sort of a preview of things to come. But this is the Bow Trapper and in a recent video, um, I'm not sure if it's if I've uploaded it yet, hopefully I have, uh, of the work knife, this one, the denim work knife, uh, I called this a sow belly trapper, which is forgivable, uh, but wrong. This is not a sow belly trapper, it's a bow trapper. Um, anyway, it's a single bladed trapper and uh, it is, well, I'll get right to it. I think it's quite a beautiful knife. You've got 440A steel. Uh, it's got a an interesting sort of grind, different from other Rough Riders and different from uh, many um, slip joints in that it's a thicker blade stock that is um, saber ground, kind of like a Northwoods uh, in a way. And um, though it is slender in this dimension and fat in that dimension, it is sharp as hell. They got a great edge on this, very uniform edge and very sharp. Um, this 440A steel, they are made in China. Uh, this 440A steel gets extremely sharp uh, and you can, you can whip it up pretty quickly. Uh, that kind of pull is called a match strike pull. And uh, I like it better in person than I do in pictures. Uh, someone commented that they thought the match stick pulls make them look a little cheap. And in pictures, I would have to agree. But in person, I actually rather like them. Uh, you got a uh, nickel silver bolster here. And then you've got what what I uh, what I ascertain to be, they call it micarta. It looks like paper micarta. If you look at those layers, those look like layers of paper, not layers of fabric like linen or canvas or anything like that. So I believe this micarta is paper and I really like it. My first paper micarta uh, in, in any knives that I have in my collection. And then it's got this unique shield, I like that shape. The pins are flush. Uh, I can feel the pin, this pin a little bit, but not on this side and not on those sides. The transitions between the bolster and the handle material is excellent. Usually uh, if you feel anything, it's in the corners and uh, this is excellent. Now, if you look real close, you'll see it's a little, it's a little off that uh, gapping. There's a little bit of gapping there, but for a $14 knife, um, this is really, really excellently built. There is no gapping when I hold it up to the light and look, there is no gapping, uh, maybe a slight bit right here. But then when you feel it with your fingers, this all feels very, very smooth. Um, you've got brass liners, you've got the steel spring, and then you've got red G10 liners, and then this black paper micarta. It is built very, very, very nicely. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was talking about the blue denim work knife the other day, uh, I brought this out to show it off and I start, sort of got lost in it. it. It's got some details you don't see in often in slip joint knives. For instance, look down there in the blade well. It's smooth and polished. That metal is smooth and polished, whereas, uh, you know, most Rough Riders that I've seen thus far and other knives, they just kind of leave it unfinished. It's, you know, it's the bottom of the knife. That it, it serves no real utility to polish that up. It's just extra machine time, which translates into extra cost. Um, but then you look at a uh, Great Eastern Cutlery down there in the blade well, it's usually nicely, nicely polished. Now this one is dusty and has seen a bit of action in there, but you can see it's smooth and, and polished in there, uh, albeit a little gunky. So that's, that's a pretty nice detail in a $14 knife. 14 bucks, I think, is what this retails for. Uh, I paid like 25 for it, like a like a Mama Luke, because it was out of, it wasn't available. So I looked on Amazon and someone was selling it on Amazon for 
an inflated price and I bought it there. And then the next day I saw it was available again on Smoky Mountain Knife Works for its, uh, for its real price. So anyway, I overpaid for it, but what are you going to do? So, uh, you got your lanyard hole, another detail that I really like on, um, on, uh, slip joint knives. And then you have at the half stop, you have a flush, uh, pretty much flush spring there, which is a, also another attend, another detail bit that uh, a lot of slip joint collectors like. Uh, I do wish that this knife had a stouter pull. I do have to say that. That's the one thing about this knife that uh, that is less than ideal. The price is ideal. The design is ideal. I'm, I'm a sucker for um, single bladed uh, slip joints. And uh, I love that trailing point. The blade is extremely sharp, like I said, for a, for a saber ground fat blade. It's very, very sharp. So there's a lot to like about this knife. I do like a snappier blade, though. I do like a, I do like a firmer. Ah, shit. I do like a firmer spring. See that? <laughs> uh, that's what I get. That's what I get. For instance... The Lion Steel, um, what is this? Gitano, another single bladed uh, slip joint here, has, a, I mean, an outstandingly <laughs> snappy, so snappy that I, I worry about blade wrap when it closes. So I usually close it gently. Um, there, there you go. Look at that. So I guess it's mine now for good. Um, so, a lot to like about this bow trapper. I called it a sow belly trapper in my other video accidentally because uh, it looks a lot like a sow belly trapper. Uh, but it, now, now that I look at them together, it's a, there's a different curve. There's more of a, a teardrop shape to this. Since I have this out, this was one of the knives and probably my, the finest of them that I got in that, uh, in that little Red Rider Hall or Rough Rider Hall. And uh, this is a sow belly trapper. Sow belly is that shape. Here's a regular trapper by Case. Uh, this is the sow belly. This mimics the belly of a sow, as you may get from the name. Um, so the, yeah, this is one of the finest of that lot. It has really uh, excellent fit and finish. I love that honey bone color. I think they call that their tobacco bone. What the hell is that? I haven't noticed that until right now. Looks like I got a little marker on there or something. Uh, but very, very nice. This has great walk and talk, great looking blades, very sharp, uh, high polish. And a lot of the uh, Rough Rider knives are hollow ground, which is nice. Hollow ground, I think, is uh, maybe easier to do in mass production. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. But uh, it's a nice little benefit. Now, that's a good looking spay, bl spay blade. I'm a big fan of the spade blade, and I like that. But here I go, talking about a different knife again. Um, so we're here to look at this. I just want to compare it to a couple of other knives before I let you go on your merry way to go buy one. Here it is with a Benchmade proper. This one I, I just took apart, and it sat around in pieces for a long time, and then I realized how spoiled and lame it was that I just left it out. Put it back together and it's so much better after i took it apart and now i like this knife uh here it is with a number 15 single bladed spear point uh, gec 15. so in the same in the same realm a little bit longer here it is with a traditional kind of standard which is the trapper this is the i love you daddy edition and here it is with the Improved Trapper. And here, I'll, I'll put this in there too. A lot of people have this knife and if you don't, uh, highly recommend it. This is the case, um, I think Tony Bowes designed this, the, the case Swayback Jack. If you didn't, I apologize. Great bunch of knives there. Look at that, a gathering of eagles ready to take over the world. But here, here we go. This is the knife I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to tell you is definitely worth the money. Uh, 
you know, there are a bunch of caveats. And those caveats are if if you if it doesn't uh, you know put your panties in a bunch that it's 440A steel, uh, then this is a great knife for you. If you have a problem with Chinese manufacturing and all that, this is definitely a problem um, because you, it's very inexpensive. So some corners were cut somewhere, probably on the human end. Uh, other than that, and if you don't like a a mild spring, uh, if you if you can stand a mild spring. I would say, go for it. This is an awesome knife, a beaut. And uh, not for nothing, but the one that they just came out with at the same time, also a single bladed, is also excellent. So.